guys and welcome back to another World Cup review Netherlands 1, Ecuador 1 I mean we had both winners of match day 1 in group A facing head to head and whoever won would have gone through I believe um, I mean not like in terms of actually going through but giving themselves like most of the chances to go through basically because Senegal did win which brings them up to 3 points Qatar have 0, Senegal 3 and then you had these two sides who also were on 3 so it would have brought either sides had they won to 6 points and that would have been big but both sides going to 4 points which means Senegal still have a chance and for Netherlands the start was really really perfect nothing else you could have asked for Cody Gagpo a huge target for United with that amazing amazing left footed strike past the goalkeeper two World Cup goals in his first two matches I mean wow that's absolutely incredible from this player um, I saw a tweet um, from one of the Real Madrid sort of fan channels um, not channels but accounts I meant um, on Twitter saying is he sort of the replacement we need or the backup we need um, and my feeling and my thoughts to someone like Gagpo or you could say with Leo or Kovacskaya or Mudrik they are not number 9 Gagpo can do a job up front but he isn't your number 9 your main number 9 is a type of player like Erling Haaland for example you know that is a number 9 even Mbappe, he's a number, he's in a number nine. He prefers to play off the left. They are not number nines. Um, so Gakpo, I don't think will fit into this Real Madrid system. I don't think we'll go for him. I think he suits a team like Arsenal. I think not bad. United, okay, fair enough. They probably do need another winger. But I think the problem with United is a striker, of course. And they're saying get Gakpo in. He isn't a number 9. You could probably let him play number 9, adapt to that role and do better. Of course you can. And with a manager like, with a manager like Eric Ten Hag, I'm not surprised if he does transform Gakpo into number 9. But if you're looking for a solution, something that can solve your problems right now, you crucially need a number 9 when Ronaldo has just left. Gakpo isn't it. But that's a perfect, perfect goal. Really, really good strike. And that was 1-0. And it looks like the Netherlands had control of the game. Even though we saw a glimpse of Ecuador and they even got the equalizer, uh, I think it was a stupid um, but apparently the goalie's view was blocked. Now it's a bit of 50 50 on this. The first shot was, you know, shot by, I don't know who was it, uh, I think it could have been Prisedo. Prisedo. Um, and then it didn't even hit anyone, it didn't travel anywhere, it just go went to a stupid um, and then he scored, but I think it was a player blocking the view of Nopet, the goalie. Um, I just want to say, the goalie was already prepared to dive to his right when the first shot came in, right? The first shot came in, he was prepared to dive, right? And the, the player in front of him didn't block him at all. But the ball went to Estupinian. So the reason he was blocked wasn't because of the player in front of him, but the shot taken by the first player, which goes to Estupinian. So he didn't expect the shot to go to Estupinian. And that was the reason why he couldn't save it. I don't think it was a block. I don't think it was one of those straightforward blocks where he just stood straight in front of him and you can't see anything. It wasn't that case. So I don't understand how it's been ruled out. But, you know, it's a very controversial decision. It's a very debatable one. You know, I'm sure there will be people out there saying, it's a block, it's a block. Staying there, it's offside, it's a block. He's blocking the view anyways. Fair enough, but I'm just putting my point of view, my opinions out. I just don't think it was offside. It was, I don't think he really blocked it. And I don't think he really would have saved it anyway. So again, it's very controversial, very debatable. But it doesn't matter because Ene Valencia went and scored again. I mean, he is the first player since I don't know who was the last player to ever score three consecutive goals in the World Cup. I don't know uh, what crazy stat he broke. Um, but the first shot from Estupinian, um, saved by Nopet, four straight for Valencia. 
um, there were calls for offside, he was onside for sure, and it's a simple tap in really, um, and he was the equalizer. And after that, I saw nothing, nothing from Netherlands, absolutely nothing going forward, no creativity, no creativity, no attempts to score. It was just passing around, and then Ecuador played very physically. Hinkapai especially, but with a lot of players, Caicedo as well, for not such a big player going in there with Frankie de Jong, with I think it was Kutminez as well. He was going there with these tackles and these brawls and these fights with these players. Um, you know, they were playing very, very offensive. They were going for it, and that is what I like to see from a team, and they fully deserved it. They fully deserved the point they got. Maybe it could have been three if they had actually scored with that Plata attempt, they chipped the bar. Um, but again, if buts and maybes, um, they fully deserved the draw that they got. And we just have to move on. Group A is very interesting now because we've got Netherlands and Ecuador on four with Senegal looking behind with three. The next game, the Netherlands take on Qatar. They have to win that one. Surely the Netherlands win that one. Right, please tell me that Qatar side that lost to Ecuador and Senegal can't beat Netherlands. Please tell me that. And then for Ecuador, that is a very interesting game. With Senegal, for the for Ecuador, a draw is all it needs. All they need is a draw to secure going through, whether that's first or second. For Netherlands they need a win. I I, I do think the Netherlands will go through. I do think that they will beat Qatar. But the more interesting game on match 3, three is Ecuador against Senegal. Keep your eyes open for that one because that is an exciting one hell of a game in this group. And I don't think it was as straightforward as people would have thought. I don't think going to this group, people would have said the Netherlands would have absolutely smashed everyone in this group and who else would go through. So I don't think it was that easy but I didn't thought that it was going to be this close really. Um, so we'll see, it will be down to the last game and even the last minute because anything can happen um, so we'll see but that will be it for today's review between Netherlands and Ecuador let me know your thoughts on the game uh, and I hope you guys have enjoyed today's review hit the like button if you did subscribe to the channel because it's on already and I'll see you guys in the next one Peace